Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. So I just, uh, kind of reminds me of like 2018. I remember when I fulfilled Iron Sights 1. I was doing like 100 something books a day to fulfill 3,300 orders. And it was just, it was just months of this, just going, you know, packing all day and then going to the uh, uh, post office, which is not close. Like on a map, it doesn't look that bad, but once you add up every single thing, it's like an hour round trip. And since I'm, uh, I just, I said this to a friend the other day, and he was like, what the fuck? I said, my soul weighs 500 pounds. He's like, it's a weird flex. I was like, what I'm trying to say is I have the soul of a very fat man. Like anytime I leave the house, it's like restaurant. You do something, any, whatever you left the house for, and then you go eat food. Well, I've been uh, losing weight lately by the astounding, unbelievable uh, tactic of eating less. And like for the first time ever, I ran an errand and I was like, I'm good. <laughs> it was a very strange feeling. So I was kind of disappointed because I put an additional 34 iron sights up as a perk. But then when I went to open the box, it said 34, it was 21. So I had to issue some refunds, but the warehouse is pretty much empty. All I've got in there is some stuff to make goodie bags for expendables because that's available like on Rock and Roll Ninja and there'll be add-ons for other things. So I'll, I'll there's no hurry on that. Uh, well, okay, the book is late, but the book's not ready. So I have time to do that, what I meant. And then I've got the uh, books for Stallone to sign and that's it. That's it, the warehouse is pretty much empty. So uh, Perch did a video. By the way, does Perch realize what a fatality, <laughs> what a Mortal Kombat fatality when he says something is fine? How rough that is? If he ever said any of my books were fine, I would just drop everything I did and I would just walk out into the desert to die basically it's so rough he's he was talking about Naomi he's like the character is fine and I'm like oh shit that bad really so anyway he did a video worst title ever you will never find this title I don't remember the title it had almost nothing to do it feels like it was a placeholder title it was something like I don't believe you think the thing that you think you do some shit like that whatever it was from today. So we got a letter uh, from uh, a fan of his channel who says, uh, hi, I'm a lesbian. You know, typical comic book industry greeting. Uh, and she says, uh, I'm very frustrated with, I think she was mainly talking about Marvel, uh, the content that Marvel puts out. I'm a lesbian, I want representation. And what I get is essentially, she said, clownish bullshit. She gets propaganda. She gets very, very shallow characters. And, you know, backup stories and anthologies. A miniseries that you didn't even know it was a miniseries because they didn't label it. Or a series that becomes a miniseries because the uh, Marvel started doing this thing a few years ago where they don't say where anything is a one-shot miniseries or a series. So they give themselves, you know, oh, <laughs> you incels. You didn't know that was a freaking 11 and a half issue miniseries? idiots um so uh it was very um i'm not gonna go over the top and say heartbreaking but it was very human the way she expressed herself she's like look i'm a lesbian but i just want like a spider-man book just spider-man who's a lesbian and then she really proved her geek cred in that she described peter parker's relationship with mary jane and made the point of it wasn't every scene. Like, if you read specifically Marvel comics, although DC is becoming much like this, it is almost guaranteed that the second page of any time a gay person enters a scene, their significant other will enter and then they will kiss. And it's just like this weird... I started working out the logistics of this. It's like, so every time in the Marvel Universe a gay person goes into a place they they kiss their significant other who is either there or arrives like two panels later so are they purposefully like staggering their schedule it's like hey i'm gonna get to work at nine and you get there at 902 so that what is happening is the writer is like i really need you to know these characters are gay i mean the twinkly eyes and the rainbow 
hair and all this stuff. Like, I need you to know they're gay. Like, they have to kiss someone of the same gender on, like, the second page of every scene. Um, and she was, she was describing Peter Parker's relationship with Mary Jane like she actually reads comics. So that made it, especially me, as a publisher, really pay attention. It's like, oh, she's not, you know, fake geek girl. She's not just here for the MCU movies like she actually reads. Now, there were times, specifically David McElhinney, where, like, there was always going to be, you know, uh, you know, smoochy scene with Peter and MJ. And I'm not saying it was... But the deal with him is David Michelin... That's how I say it in my head, Michelini. Um, he had a very standard way of writing. It sounds rough to say formulaic, so I'm just going to say he had a very standard way of writing. <laughs> so I think in his head... Every comic had to have one scene where, oh, my secret identity, one scene. Hey, I've got a case of the not gays. One scene, it's like, oh, work, am I right? And it was like, it was very standard. <laughs> but in most other writers, sometimes they'll be on a date and he gets called away. And sometimes you just won't see Mary Jane Watson Parker, whatever, for three, four, five, I don't know, six issues. He's doing shit. He's down there in the sewers. By the way, I need a determination on what is in the sewers that comic book characters are in. Now, there have been a very few times where they've literally said, like, oh my gosh, I'm in shit. But usually they like to play it, you know, maybe this is rainwater, maybe. Like, are the Ninja Turtles just eating pizza with just, like, rivers of feces just flowing by them? I feel like it's rainwater and fairly clean rainwater at that. But I found it very uh, endearing and human for a woman who obviously actually reads comics to say, hey, I'm a lesbian, supposedly I'm getting representation, but all I'm getting is fucking clownish bullshit. And she gave a great um, recognition of heroes are doing hero shit, so their romantic lives are very rarely going to be a priority and if it is it's probably because their significant other is being tossed off a bridge or stabbed or blown into a million pieces or something so again as a publisher i was like well you know what am i doing and i do have you know gay characters at my company but they're kind of busy <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> like clarissa is a lesbian but She's busy. Like, there's a, you know, reference to uh, a partner and, and an ex-girlfriend. Mainly, she's just kind of busy doing the stuff in, you know, the 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 story. Um, and then even she's uh, she's coming back in Mind Your Business, but she's in essentially a firefight, so she's not like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this bullet hits me. My lesbian girlfriend won't have a lesbian girlfriend that's me. Uh, Devil Dog, another example, gay. Um, but it doesn't really come up much, you know, it's like, it's known. I mean, in Grand Bazaar, he mentions it a few times, but, uh, one's actually both of her, one's just kind of informational. A woman hits on him and is like, he's like, you should really take a, a different approach. You know, if, if you want me to help you, don't be okay. Yeah. Um, and then another one is, well, you have to see, but, um, it's really tragic. I mean, they, and, and Perch made a great point is that this has nothing to do with caring about gay people, representation or equality or any of that stuff. It's all ego. It is all ego. It is all just so that they can brag about it, you know, on social media. Hey, it's Pride Month again, and we're pretending to care about gays. You know, you gays with the rainbow hair, and you're always kissing each other because you're gay. Every time a gay person walks into a room, they kiss another gay person. That's just how it works. Um, and it, it, I've often said this. If every gay professional in comics was revealed to be an FBI agent pretending to be gay, it would make a lot more sense because they're just so over the top. And like I always say, they act like sitcom characters. They act like gay characters from NBC sitcoms from the 1990s. 
Um, the thing is, the way that this woman described what she wanted as representation was really just saying, like, I want a cool superhero. And I was like, yeah, me too. Who gets in adventures? Yeah, me too. And as a lesbian, it's like, you know, two out of three. It's not really what I'm looking for, but uh, it, how many? Who gets in adventures anymore? Nobody gets in adventures. The X Men just mill about. Every, <laughs> all these characters are just standing around. The funny thing Perch was talking about in, uh, I think, a different video. He's like, uh, you know, comic book artists often they have trouble drawing movement, people running. You know what's the most difficult thing? Having someone just standing there. In fact, I would pretty much say that John Romita Jr. is the only artist I've ever seen who's consistently good at conversations or people just kind of at rest or at repose. He understands how hips work, male and female. Like he's, he's like, okay, so the female, they, they'll, what I'm trying to say is usually when you're standing, if you're, unless you're really tense, you're kind of favoring one side or the other. Although it looks vastly different, you know, depending on how female hips and, you know, spine, pelvis are constructed versus male. Like, he's the only person who can draw someone standing there, and they look like a person standing and not an action figure posed on a shelf. But the most interesting and tragic thing is a woman who actually reads comics, asking for representation, is asking for a comic that everyone would read. And instead we get this clownish bullshit of these <laughs> undercover FBI agents. Hey, any fellow gays in here? Did you hear about Pride Month? It's my favorite. I think it's June. <laughs> and they're like speaking into their like, you know, microphone. It's like, I've located the queers. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, what is this? I don't know what's more cartoonish, the gay pros or the gay characters. But one thing I had a I had a funny feeling about is like I noticed this woman didn't ask for a lesbian to write the character. Kind of get the feeling that if it was, you know, I don't know, Dwayne Swierzynski or Cullen Bunn or Chuck Dixon who apparently is not on a blacklist according to Perch. And also, technically, I'm not. Although, that's a real technicality. That's where it has the asterisk, then the other asterisk, then the thing that looks like a, a crucifix down at the bottom, you know, the ibids and all that type of stuff. His theory is I'm not on a blacklist because someone has to offer you a job and then has, have it get, like, Dikembe Mutombo swatted down. And then he basically said you have to prove you're on a blacklist. So, I was like, okay, fine. I, I could not take that pay cut. <laughs> oh my god. No. Well, how do these people live off of these these page rates? $75 a pay. Wow. Okay. No. No wonder they're all communists. So anyway, just to get back to my thesis. Uh, an actual comic book fan asking for representation asks for a comic that all fans would read. When corporations just want to use and exploit gay people for publicity, which is what they do now, you get a bunch of clownish, cartoonish bullshit. I picked this thumbnail because that's how they see gays. They're like, oh my God, like, I know they're doing the thing. It's like, oh, Hercules, he was based on this and he's bisexual because back in the day and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, but he wouldn't do this. He, he wouldn't do this. And the Dora Milaje are just going to just canoodle? No, I think they would be very serious about it. But it's like there's one default gay personality, which is FBI agent pretending to be gay, or 1990s NBC sitcom gay. Um, and it's, I'm laughing, but it's sad. It's actually really sad. The way these corporations debase, dehumanize, and exploit gay people the way, okay, let's, I'm not joking, yeah, obviously Vita Ayala and Joe Glass and Mags are gay, but it is behooved to them, upon them, it's just behooved for them to be as cartoonish and cliche as possible because that helps them get 
very low pain work. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, now I'm going to go stuff my fat uh, ghost face on my 500-pound soul. Thanks for watching. Bye.